Have you been wanting to try acrylic painting, but you're not sure where to start? In this video, I'm going to take you through painting this cow pasture scene with just a few colors and a few brushes in just nine easy steps. Here's a list of the supplies we'll be using for this painting. A one and a half inch soft bristle flat brush, a stiff bristle fan brush, a quarter inch soft bristle flat brush, and a 3-0 script liner brush. We're only going to use four colors for this painting. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber, cadmium yellow light, and white gesso. I'm going to paint this one on a half inch 11 by 14 stretched canvas. All right, step one. Let's go ahead and get started with some ultramarine blue. Put a little touch of uh, burnt umber in there and a lot of gesso. Um, going to try to make a light blue for the sky. Uh, the, the brown in there makes it just a little bit more gray, and that's what I want. I don't want it too pretty. Uh, I'm just going to put a base coat for the sky. Now, with every painting, the first step I usually do is to completely cover the canvas. Uh, with paint and since this mostly has gesso in it it's going to be a good base coat for the rest of the paint to stick to um, so during this step I'm really just focusing on scrubbing the paint down into the canvas into the pores of the canvas um, and getting it completely covered you want to make sure that you work pretty quickly when you're doing this because if the paint starts to dry uh, it can tend to kind of roll up on you and if that happens you'll be pulling off more paint than you're putting on so throw it on quickly now once it's completely covered it's still wet I'm gonna go over it lightly a few times and just kind of smooth it out like I said this is all about making a surface to paint on top of so get out some of those brush strokes and get it sort of smoothed out but really work it into the canvas sometimes I'll use a different color for this underpainting because it really kind of sets the mood for the entire painting since this one is sort of a a foggy morning this blue color does a good job of laying the foundation for that now once this is smoothed out to my satisfaction uh, I want to dry it I'm just going to use a regular blow dryer and blow dry it completely where it's dry to the touch and once that's completely dry I'm going to come back over with a second coat only on the top half of the canvas. This is going to be our sky uh, section, so I really only want to do about the top half. Doesn't really matter on the bottom because that's all going to be covered up by something else. But I do want to make sure that this top section is fairly smooth and you know kind of cover up all my brush strokes and let it kind of gradually fade down to this bottom half. At this point, I'm going to use the blow dryer again and get it completely dry to the touch and then we'll move on to the next step next thing we need to do is establish our horizon line I'm going to take a ruler and measure about four and a half inches down from the top on both sides this is going to be where our land meets the sky so we're going to could just draw a line across here I'll use my ruler to give myself a pretty straight line doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it's a cow pasture, so it doesn't have to be a perfect line. But that'll give us an idea of where to start. Well, let's talk a minute about these colors. I've chosen three colors plus gesso for this entire painting. So what we're going to do is mix every color that we use today out of these three. And I know that scares a lot of people who are beginners. But when you mix your colors from a limited palette this way, it makes them really cohesive it makes them match each other really well and for this first row of trees I really want a brown I don't ever want to use colors straight out of the tube but I want to dirty this brown up a little bit with some yellow a little bit of blue but it's going to be a brown that leans a little bit towards green and I'm using my quarter inch flat brush here I'm just going to kind of put this line in and put a row of trees about a half inch tall uh, just kind of using the brush vertically to make those treetops 
not really trying to make individual trees. This is a row of trees really far off in the distance. It's going to be in the background. It's going to be, a lot of it's going to be covered up. Just want to kind of vary the height of them from, you know, down the line and just go all the way across the canvas with these. I want to make sure to keep them about half inch tall, maybe to three quarters of an inch total all the way across. But, uh, you know, some short, some higher. You're going to get tired of hearing me say this, but just do it quickly. Especially in the early stages of the painting when it really doesn't matter that much. Most of it's going to get changed at some point. Don't spend too much time on every little detail. This is not the finished product. All right, let's get these last few in. And once the trees have made it to the other side of the canvas, I'm going to go back while it's still wet and just make sure the texture of the trees kind of looks normal. I don't want to see too many, you know, obvious brush strokes. And I really kind of want to fuzz out the top edges. Uh, these are so far away, you can't see much detail. So I want the top edge of this tree line to be kind of fuzzy. Mostly using a dry brush or just what paint was left on the brush. Or picking up paint that's still wet and kind of moving it around. The most important thing is to make sure those treetops are a little bit fuzzy and they look far away. Part of creating the depth is making the things that are far away have very little detail and very fuzzy lines. And then when you get to the foreground, you can use more detail and more sharp lines, and it creates a lot of depth. I'm going to start this next step with my one and a half inch brush again. And mix up some really light green. We'll start with uh, a little blue and gesso and add in a good bit of yellow. I just really want to end up with a pastel, almost like a mint green to start with. I think that's about it right there. This is going to be for our really far off grasses way off in the distance. So what we're going to do is use three colors to paint this entire bottom half of the canvas. This first one goes all the way up to the bottom of that tree line and I'm just going to kind of smooth that across there. It's okay if it picks up a little bit of that paint. That's the very far away edge of the trees and like I said it's a cow pasture so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. I'm going to come down with that color about a third of the way and then come back in and add a little bit more blue, a little bit more yellow, and add a little bit more brown. That's going to make it uh, not quite as not quite as green. As we come to the bottom, we're going to get a little bit darker completely. So this is about my mid-tone. Uh, go there, and for about the second two-thirds of the canvas, we're going to come down with this color. Now, as you're putting this on, it needs to blend with what's above, and it needs to kind of feather out at the bottom so it can blend with what goes below. And it's only a little bit different than what's above there. It's not, not a drastic difference. I'm also going to come a little lower on the left side, so a little bit of an angle down towards the bottom left corner. And when we do the third color, I'll do even more of that. And for the third color, same thing, just a little more brown, a little more blue. It's a lot darker. And as I put this on, I want to make sure it has a little bit of an angle where it's lower on the left, goes up a little higher on the canvas on the right and that those three colors fade seamlessly one into the next. Now let's have some fun. I'm going to use my Stiff Bristle Fan Brush. This one, you can tell, is old and worn out. Those are the best ones. And what I want to do is we're going to paint some treetops. I want to get a color that is a little different than what our background trees are. Maybe a touch more green to start with. Not very different. And a lot of water. It's got a lot of water in this paint. And then you see how I'm just going to tap, the, lay the brush down and let the tip of the bristles kind of create the tops of the trees. And it's got a lot of water in this to make this work. If your paint is too creamy, the bristles are going to stick together and it's not going to give you the right effect. The right fan brush is going to make this much, much easier and the right amount of water in the paint. Now, as I go back into the paint, I'm going to make a little bit of change to each color. 
each time I go in, maybe a little more brown, maybe a little more green. None of them are going to be bright green. They're all kind of ugly brownish green colors, and that's by design. These are going to be pecan trees. Now, I live in Alabama, so this is a common scene around here. Uh, cow pasture in the middle of what looks like a pecan orchard. I don't know if they're planting the trees in the cow pasture or if the cow pasture used to be an orchard. I don't know what the deal is, but you always see cow pastures with pecan trees if you're in the south. I'm sure there's a reason for it. Uh, maybe the cows like to eat the pecans. I don't know. If you know, let me know in the comments. Now I want to make sure that I vary the height of these trees as well as the color. Uh, some a little taller, some a little shorter. And I'm coming down all the way to my tree line. I'm trying really to ignore that tree line. I don't, I don't want to stop at it. I don't care if I put a little paint on top of it. I don't care if I go a little below it. But these trees are much closer than the ones in the back. Now, once those are all the way across the canvas, and I'm happy with the way they look, I'm going to use the blow dryer again and get these completely dry. One of the great things about painting with acrylics is that if you make a mistake, you can take a damp paper towel and just wipe it off. But that only works if what's underneath is completely dry. Now I'm going to grab my liner brush and come in here and I'm going to make some black. Now, it won't be pure black, but if you mix 50-50 burnt umber and uh, ultramarine blue, you're going to get something that's as close as what we need to black. I don't like using black paint straight out of the tube. It's too black, too rich. Every once in a while I use it, but it's better to mix this color. It makes it look a little more natural. All right, come up here, and we're going to start putting some of these tree trunks in. Just want to pull those. Uh, the rule is they just need to get thinner as they go up. Uh, you just need to be a little thicker at the bottom, not super thick. I'm going to start these about a half inch below our back tree line, and I find that it's easier just to turn the canvas upside down and pull these downward instead of trying to push them upward. It lets the paint flow a little better, and you want to make sure that you've got plenty of water in the paint so that it flows with this liner brush. And I'm really not trying to put one trunk per tree. I'm just trying to put a lot of tree trunks and there's a lot of tree tops and they'll match up. You don't have to calculate where every branch attaches to the next branch. Now, the pecan trees, they will uh, they'll a lot of times split off and have more than one branch coming out of the same trunk. So it looks like it has three trunks or two trunks. That's pretty common with those kind of trees, uh, but not always. So I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do some that way and some single by themselves. You want to make sure that you don't make a pattern. It's very easy to paint things in a pattern. We, want, we like for things to be symmetrical and perfect. Um, one of the hardest things to do when you're painting is to kind of randomize. That's one thing that turning the canvas upside down lets you do. Your brain doesn't register as a tree, so it lets you kind of paint a little more random. And when you flip it back over, you, you think, well, that looks pretty good. Now I want to make sure that some of these start closer to the horizon line and some start a little bit further down the canvas. That gives them depth. You know, some are further, some are closer. When you're using this lighter brush, you want to have, like I said, plenty of water in the paint. It needs to be about the consistency of ink. And then you want to kind of roll the brush when you're loading the paint so that it kind of comes to a point. Um, and when you're using it on the canvas, make sure just the very tip of the brush is touching the canvas. So this is a, a 3.0. It's a really small liner brush, but you can gently use the very tip of it and you can get a very, very, very thin line with this if you want to. And I just want to put a few branches on here, not too many. Then I just want to use my finger and kind of blot out the top edges of these tree trunks to make them blend in with the, the leaves and the tops of the trees. Now I'm going to go back and adjust a few of these that look a little bit weird. Be careful not to spend too much time on this. Again, this is not the subject of the painting. This is kind of background. You don't want too much detail. You want to save your best work for the last part of the painting when we're at the foreground. We always paint these paintings from back to front, and at the end you'll be in the very foreground. You can put all your details there. Now I think we're about ready to 
flip this thing back over. Now I'm going to grab my quarter inch flat brush again and get a little bit of that dark colored paint. Still got plenty of water in it. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of paint on there and just come to the bottom of these trees. I'm going to put in a little bit of, I guess, what would be a shadow or fallen leaves or whatever, but a little dark color at the bottom of these trees. I like to call this just tying them to the ground so they look like they're floating right now. We put a little bit of dark at the bottom of them and it'll just kind of tie them to the ground. Now wipe the paint off the brush and I just want to use a dry brush to scrub out the bottom edge of all of that. And again, make sure you have plenty of water in this paint for this step. This water makes acrylic paint a little more transparent. So when you're putting it on like this, you can use a dry brush and scrub the bottom out and it'll kind of disappear for you. I'm going to do that to each one of those trees. Get a little bit of a shadow area under there. Make sure to scrub every one of them out. Be sure that some of this goes off the edge of the canvas too. That's true with all of these steps. You don't want to stop at the canvas edge. You always want to go off the edge of the canvas when you have the opportunity to. So when you're done with those trees, we've got our pecan trees in the background. We're ready to move on to the next step. Let's work on this grass a little bit. I really want to add some texture to it. I'm going to start with a color that is a little different than what we had before. You just start with the grass color that I already had on my palette. Uh, you're going to make that just a slightly different shade, maybe a little more yellow, a little lighter. We'll see if that shows up good enough and then we'll adjust as we go. I want to be sure to get a good bit of water in this so the bristles in the brush can separate and so I can get those textures. If you have your paint too creamy, it's just going to be like painting with a flat brush and you won't get the texture. I just want to use a tapping motion. Use the tips of the brush. Just kind of tap downward to give you a little bit of a up and down texture. I'm not really looking for individual blades of grass at this point. I just want to get some texture there so it's not so smooth. Hide those brush strokes that are underneath. Um, you get back a little bit darker color so it'll show up a little more. But I'm really just going to put the paint on with a good bit of water and then come back, clean the brush out, dry brush, and just kind of scrub this stuff out before it dries. I don't want really any hard edges, especially far off in the distance. I don't want to be able to see individual blades of grass. I just want to scrub it out, get some texture, and starting with a shape that's kind of a triangle from the left side, getting smaller as it goes to the right. Get a little bit more water on here and just kind of scrub out those edges. I don't want any hard edges. Just kind of want to blend it out. And if I do have any brush strokes showing, I want them to be kind of up and down. I'm going to come back in with a little bit of a darker color, kind of a little more brown, a lot of water, and go from the other side. And this one will be a little smaller, but again, I want to kind of do a, a triangle shape from the right side of the canvas, getting smaller as it goes down to the left side. And again, I just want to get texture. I'm not really trying to get any, any real grass shapes. This is more of dead grass or the ground showing through. Just really want to soften all the edges, blend everything out, and just add some variety of color in here. And once that's done, I'm just going to hit it with the blow dryer real quick. Make sure it's nice and dry before we move on. Now I'm going to grab my liner brush and go in here to some of this dark, uh, almost black color again, with lots and lots of water in here. And we're going to start on some little fence posts. Uh, we'll start on the left side, really small. And as I come over towards the right, I want to make them a little bit taller and come slightly down the canvas so that from the left to the right they are about two inches lower on the far right side from where they started on the left. Now these are old uh, you know fence posts they're not uh, anything exact they can be crooked they'll actually look better if they're not perfect. This is a barbed wire fence and I'm going to come back and put a little details this one maybe it was Leaning over, needed some bracing. You see that a lot. I think I want them to be a little bit darker. Go back and darken them up just a little bit. If you get some that are, you know, not straight or like that one was two together, that's fine. You see that all the time when one starts getting 
to where it's going to fall over, they'll just put another one next to it and tie it to it with the barbed wire. So these have probably been here for years. They're not that important. Now go back to my flat brush. I'm going to try to put a little cow in here. Now, this might scare some people, and this is optional. If you don't want this cow, you don't have to have one this close. You can just have the ones in the distance. I'm not using a sketch for this. I'm just going to put some paint up and just move it around. I've, um, I know the general shape that I'm kind of going for. And it takes a little while sometimes to get the hang of this. But the trick is if you can't, if your painting underneath is dry, then if you mess it up, you can just take a wet paper towel, wipe it off, blow dry the wet spot, and start over. Um, it's not going to be perfect. This is far away. You know, you really can't see any detail on this. Uh, kind of looks like a buffalo at this point, but that's okay. Uh, I'll work on it now, and I'll let it dry and come back and shape it up a little bit more later. Just mainly want to get it blocked in, get in the position that I want it, and let that be drying a little bit so I can come back and detail it a little later. Now I switch to my liner brush so I can get a little bit more detailed on the shapes. Still not perfect. But uh, I think that's probably going to be good enough to move on, come back and clean it up later. Now let's put some more cows back here. Uh, that's the only one that I'm going to really spend any time on. The rest of these are just going to be little blobs of paint sitting out in the field. They don't have to have much detail. A couple back here that are maybe, I don't know, laying down in the grass. Uh, you know, just a blob of paint. It doesn't have to look like a cow, really. As long as it doesn't look, you know, out of proportion. As long as it's not really huge or really, um, as long as it doesn't look like something else besides a cow. Uh, your brain will tell you that it's a cow. You're looking at a cow pasture. There's other cows. There's a black dot laying in the middle of the field. That's a cow. You know? A lot of times when we're painting, we'll rely on, you know, optical illusions to create the effect that there's something there that's really just a blob of paint. Now, those ones that are far away, they really need to be small. And the ones in that back field are just tiny little dots. Now, you can do as many of these as you'd like. Just don't get too carried away. When you're done, it's a good idea to blow dry it so you don't touch those and smear them. And I'm going to come back and adjust my big cow a little bit here now that that's a little more dry. First, make it a little more solid. And then clean up the edges just a little bit, make them have four legs instead of two. Now, like I said earlier, I chose not to use a sketch here, but you could very easily have traced this in from a silhouette that you can find online or just sketch it first, whatever you're comfortable with. I don't have any problems with finding something online and tracing it. You can use some tracing paper and or transfer paper rather and just transfer that straight onto the canvas. And paint that if you're more comfortable with it. I don't like when people try to tell beginners that they shouldn't trace. That they need to draw everything by hand. You know, use whatever resources you have available to you. I would rather trace something and get it right. Than to try to draw it just to say that I drew it. And have it look really, really wrong. And I've seen that a lot with beginners. Uh, you know, and then uh, this is a real important step. Just like we did on the trees. I want to put a little bit of paint on the bottom of each of these, and I'm just going to use my finger and kind of smear that out. You don't want those, uh, you know, floating, like we said with the trees. This kind of ties it to the ground. It gives a little, you know, shadow. Maybe that's where the grass is a little thicker, you know. I don't know. It just really keeps them from looking like they're floating and out of place. And this paint has a lot of water in it. I'm just touching it on there, use my finger to smear it around. A uh, little here, a little there. That's all it really takes. Now, once you are done with this and it looks right, they don't look like they're floating anymore, and you're ready to move on, go ahead and use the blow dryer and get this really, really, really dry for this next step. Now, if you've made it this far, I'm going to ask that you trust me a little bit. This is going to be kind of scary. Uh, I'm going to take some pure gesso, I'm going to add some water to it, make it about 50-50 gesso and water, and make sure, before you do this next step, make very sure that your painting is completely, completely dry 
blow dry it, blow dry it, blow dry it until it's really, really dry. And then I'm going to take this 50-50 mixture and I'm just going to paint over everything we just did. Completely cover up all of your hard work. But trust me on this, this is really going to give a good effect. I want to go all the way over everything that we've done, all the way down to the part at the bottom that we haven't really gotten to yet. Because we're still going to do something to that. Work back and forth strokes. Work really, really quickly, but get that completely covered. Then I'm going to come back with a dry paper towel, a big wad of dry paper towels, and in using small circles, I want to kind of rub this into the canvas. It is wiping some of it off, but really what I'm trying to do is kind of rub it down into the canvas. Very light touch and small circles. And then once that's done, real quickly, take the whole thing, a dry edge on the paper towel, and just wipe over the whole thing until it's pretty dry. And then blow dry everything completely. All right, now we're going to come back with some more vibrant colors. Since we've got the back fogged out, you know, it looks like it's far away. Now we're going to enhance that effect by putting some brighter colors in the foreground as we move closer. So we're going to start by mixing some, a lot of yellow, a little bit of blue, make a green. I'm going to make it a little less pretty with some, some of that brown. And I'm going to get a color that's close to what we had before, just a bit more vibrant. And I'm using my Stiff Bristle Fan Brush again. I did switch to a different brush, but it's the same as the other one. Now I'm going to just use a tapping downward motion. Just real quick down motion where the tip of the brush touches the canvas first. And see how that gives you like a little bit of a top edge of some grass. And just do this quickly. This is not sped up. This is just be moving, moving quickly. You just keep tap, tap, tapping it, making those top edges look like grass texture. Now, I don't want to go all the way up to my fence, but I want to go pretty close. And like we did before, I want to make a sort of a triangle shape from the left, getting smaller as it goes to the right. And then we'll do the same thing, you know, on the other side. And I've not gone back into the paint. I've got that same paint that was initially on the brush. And just like before, I'm going to just keep using it until it's completely gone. It's okay to have some gaps showing through here where the ground kind of shows through. Um, and once I'm done with the what paint was on the brush, I'm going to come back and get a slightly different color. This time I'm going to go a little darker maybe. Uh, a little more blue, a little more brown. Go a little darker on that right side. A little bit of water to let the bristles separate a little bit better. And then the same kind of thing. I'm just going to keep tapping, keep making textures over there. But you see how this looks a little bit more like grass than what we did in the background. My color didn't vary quite as much as I wanted it to. But every time I go back into the paint, I want to grab just a slightly different variation of color. And I want to make sure to leave plenty of gaps showing through. You know, just to make it look... Like it's not super consistent. It it don't need to look like you're painting your wall in your bedroom. It needs to look rough. Make sure I get up here, but not all the way up to my background stuff. Now you see how that faded out uh, background now looks really far away. That's by design. We We want that to look far away. That's why we fogged it out. And now as we come closer, we'll go brighter and darker with the colors to make the foreground look a lot closer. Back into the paint. We'll go a little bit of a highlight color here, just a little lighter, less paint on the brush, and just here and there, pop in a little extra color just to vary it up a little bit. I may have to uh, get some of that paint off the brush to let that blend. And this is one of the tricks of creating depth. Anytime you're trying to create depth in your painting, you want your far away colors to be. Really soft, really cool, and as you come towards the front of the painting or the closest part to you, you want them to be a lot more vibrant, a lot darker, um, a lot crisper lines, and that's how we create that depth. And then we want to blow dry it. Next, I want to come back with my quarter inch flat brush, and I'm going to get some of this black. I'd make a little bit more. I think I'm going to make it lean a little more towards the brown. 
a little bit more brown in there, and I want this to be pretty thick. I've got a little bit of water in my brush, but I want it to be pretty thick. I'm going to paint a couple of these close-up fence posts. Now, the other fence in the back kind of came down at an angle. I want this one to kind of start at the bottom corner and go up a little bit. And I'm just kind of marking the bottoms of where I want these to be. They don't have to be perfect. You know, again, this is an old fence. So it goes kind of slanted up the canvas, and then the other line goes back up the other direction, and then the tree line goes straight. It kind of forms a Z shape through the canvas. And I'm just going to put these in with the flat brush. Um, I may want that to be just a little wider than the brush. Um, good and dark to start with. And if they're perfect, they're going to look weird. So there's jagged edges, shaky hands. That's great. On this first one, I'm going to go ahead and give it a partner here. Um, help it stay up like we talked about before. You see that a lot. You, that's a repair that was made probably 20 years ago. I don't want these to be telephone poles. They don't need to be freshly bought from the store. You know, they're just old rickety fence posts. So throw them in quick and don't worry about them too much. Now as I get further away, they are going to get a little bit thinner as they go away from us. Not much, though. And see how they kind of lean in on each other sometimes that's okay too I don't really I don't don't try to use a, a straight edge or any kind of thing to make these perfect because you'll regret it all right then at the bottoms give them a little dark edge again this is tying them to the ground I'm not going to smear it out as much because I'm about to put some grass down there on top of this but I just want to give them a little bit of what will be an underpainting for the grass that goes on top of them I'm going to dry that brush out and I'll scrub that just a little bit. Scrubbing it out, knowing that it's going to be mostly covered up. And once again, once I have that to the way that I like it, I'm going to go ahead and get the blow dryer and make sure that's really good and dry before I go on to put the grasses down on the bottom. Now I'm going to come back with my fan brush and get some more of this darker green. We'll go ahead and make some more. Yellow and blue makes green. Brown makes it not look so cartoonish. <laughs> I always say that pretty greens look fake. Uh, so you want to use something a little bit ugly, a little bit dirty. Uh, we'll make that a really dark, put a good bit of brown in there. I think I want to get it you know, pretty pretty close to brownish green yeah that looks good all right and then we're going to start working on the paint in the foreground the uh, grass in the foreground rather coming along just the bottom of that tree line and this is the grass out by the road that the cows can't really get to all that well so it may be a little taller uh, pretty dark actually I think I want that even darker now that I see it I'm going to come back with a we go cross with this first and then maybe come back with a darker color. Let's do that. Let's go back into this black that we had earlier. A little more blue. Give us almost black with just the slightest hint of green. Yeah, I like that. And come back to the base of these. I don't want to cover all that other stuff up. That's pretty good grass. But I am going to put a good bit of this down all the way to the bottom of the canvas. And as you get towards the bottom, you may have to pull the canvas out away from the uh, easel just a little bit to be able to get to it. All right, the final step we're going to do are the details. Get some of this light color on my half inch flat brush or quarter inch flat brush rather, and just going to come in and try to put some highlights on these fence posts. Now you can do this a couple different ways, and I'll show you a few techniques. One way is just to paint the light side on, then come back with a clean or dry brush and just kind of scrub that paint around. That'll give you a little bit of detail, give you a little bit of an effect in there. Um, but another way is just to use more paint, come back with a little bit more paint with some water in it. And this is this is a little more white too. Just going to put some of this on, um, just kind of towards the top. 
And then I want to wash my brush out completely and use just water to uh, push this around. and put a puddle of water up here and just kind of let it puddle up and run down the, the post there. Now that water running effect will give you some really good details in there. You got a little too much paint on that one, but we'll come back with that. And I, on these detail parts, sometimes I use my finger for this texture more than I do brushes. Uh, but what you can do is just put a little lip on, and that's the, the another way that you do it is just put a little paint on and then just use your finger with some water and push that around. I'll try that on these. You come back with your finger, and these may be a little too small, these posts, to get the effect right, but you. Just put a little water in there and kind of just push it around. Rub it into the canvas with your finger. And the canvas texture will actually give you some good detail on wood. And this works on tree trunks, you know, um, wood slats on the side of a house. You know, anytime you need some texture uh, in wood or other other surfaces as well, just adding a little water and pushing it around will give you that. I mainly want to make these first two look the best because they're the closest to us. Uh, I'm going to come back now with a little bit of my darker color and go down on the bottom of these. And the bottoms are going to be darker. They're closer to the ground. They're a little bit dirtier, grimier. I put a little dark and I'm kind of keeping this to the left side, which will kind of give them a 3D, kind of a rounded effect. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort, a whole lot of detail to make it look like you really spent some time doing it. Now let's get some uh, watery, dark brown, almost black. Lots of water. Roll it to a tip. Let's try to put some of this barbed wire in. Now don't get too stressed about trying to make this perfect. If you go quickly, just use the tip of the brush. and Just get some lines going. They don't have to go all the way across. It's okay that they don't. We're just kind of suggesting where the barbed wire is here. I think I got a little too much paint in my brush this time. Let's get some of that out. Just want to pull these across, lightly touching the very tip of the brush across. The faster you go, the straighter they'll be. And this brush, with its really long bristles, it'll kind of stabilize. Even if your hand is a little shaky, it'll stabilize it for you. You go back with my finger and just kind of smear these across. Like I said, they don't have to be perfectly clean lines. You couldn't really see this. If you're driving past a uh, cow pasture, you can't really see the barbed wire. And if you do, you're not really looking at it. You just got to in indicate that it's there. I'm just going to continue going across really quickly. Even the ones that don't show up completely, I'll go back and we'll put some little dots of where the barbs are, are and you can still tell that that's where the wire is. Let's go back in, put a couple of those little dots here and there. Like I said, even where there's no wire, tiny little dots, because a lot of times from a distance, that's what you'll see more than you will the wire itself. That looks pretty good. Don't have to do every single one, and they don't have to be perfect. Just little spots here and there to make the wires look complete. I'm going to come back and round some of this around the poles too. Where they just kind of, the wires usually just kind of either twisted around the pole or stapled to it. I think that's pretty good right there. A little bit more detail here. You can spend more time on this if you want to and put more details in the grass, some individual grass blades and some whatever flowers you want in the foreground. Don't get too carried away with it though, but if you are going to put detail in a painting, make it the most foreground part, which in this case would be the bottom three or four inches of the canvas. That's where you want to spend your time. I think I'm pretty much done with this one. And here's the final painting. I hope you've enjoyed painting this with me. If you did, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you can find out when a new painting is available. Mm -hmm.